Okay, so we are continuing uh, on our conceptual questions with the chat GPT. I'm on the conceptual question set that asked about Newton's law of universal gravitation. So let's ask. Um, well, um, I think, I, I don't think this is really, oh, is it necessary? Let, uh, yeah, it, it looks like in the open text, it's a one question. So let me just do it piecemeal like here. So please answer. The following questions, and then uh, ChatGPT is smart enough to know to wait. Um, so I'll say first a describe. I'm guessing it'll uh, get this question correctly. It's the kind of question that ChatGPT does well on describing terms and explaining differences. Yeah, moves around the continuously in orbit, definitely indefinitely, and uh, yeah. Yeah, unbound orbit is um, yeah. yeah sometimes uh, i think it's some people talk about hyperbolic orbit because that hyperbolize the shape that uh, those unbound orbits trace uh yeah enough energy yeah yeah comets and asteroids not in general but if they enter the solar system from interstellar space then yeah um there are those kind of one-time encounters. I think there was that weird oblong object that was in use a few years ago. That would be an example of that. Um, yeah, all right, that's correct. <laughs> Let's uh, look at the next question. Um, yeah, I think in this answer, it already kind of gave a portion of this, but let's see how it extend, expands on it. Or maybe uh, ChatGPT tends to repeat stuff when you ask related questions, so we'll see. Uh, it got it wrong. <laughs> um, <laughs> it uh, flipped it around, maybe. So let me do it this way. Um, so I guess the place I would start from is a satellite with a negative total energy is in a boundary, right? Because it has enough kinetic energy to maintain its orbital motion against the gravitational attraction of the... Okay, that, I mean, um, that is... So it is true that it has enough kinetic energy to maintain its orbital motion, but um, that's not relevant to connecting to the negative total energy. So I would scratch out um, this to maintain its orbital motion against the gravitational attraction of the central body. Uh, actually, uh, let me do it this way. So what you really want to focus on is because it has negative total energy you know total energy is the potential energy which in this setting is always negative plus the kinetic energy uh, which is positive uh, in all cases so here really what you should focus on with the negative total energy is the fact that you don't have enough energy so you should say it doesn't have enough kinetic energy enough kinetic energy to do what and i would say rather than maintain its orbital motion against the gravitational attraction but rather doesn't have enough kinetic energy to escape the gravitational attraction of the central body because uh, the potential energy as a distance goes to infinity in this setting it's a set so that the potential energy goes to zero from negative side so as uh, the object gets far far away potential energy is zero so if there's any kinetic energy left then that's where you have um, that's where you have positive total energy so if you have negative total energy that means your kinetic energy is not enough to allow the object to, to go indefinitely out into infinity so uh, is uh, kinetic energy the its uh, absolute value of kinetic energy is less not greater than its uh, absolute value of gravitational potential energy 
On the other hand, if it has a zero part, it means that its uh, kinetic energy is sufficient to overcome the gravitational pull of the central body. Uh, in this case, oh wow! Uh, enter a number. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess just cross out that nod and the rest of the answer is fine. Wow. The convention is that, yeah, yeah, this is kind of what I was describing. Uh, so then, because more negative as, yeah, satellite with the total negative and has lower potential, then it would. Uh, and that is correct. So it just had some odd errors in the first and the second paragraph. If this was a student um, giving this answer, I would say, oh, that's mostly correct. Um, of course, when it's ChatGPT, you know, if it's wrong about one significant thing, it's just entirely wrong. No mercy. <laughs> All right, uh, let's look at the next question. Some satellites are placed in. Yeah, by the way, um, I use the word geosynchronous uh, to mean. Um, it, I know it's not standard to use, um, but it's a stock, so I'm just uh, keeping it that way. I think when I say, whenever I say geosynchronous, I mean. Oh, actually, this is uh, okay. So this is not my wording. So it's actually correct to use. Uh, I use the word geostationary when I should say geosynchronous. <laughs> but because this is a textbook question, they use the word correctly. Uh, okay, so the question was, describe what is special about this orbit. Um, um, it, there is no restriction. If it's geostationary, then yes. <laughs> but when it's geosynchronous, no. <laughs> Answer the minimum number of satellites required. Uh, global community, uh, three, I think. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Uh, satellite orbit at the same rate. Yeah, that's the only requirement. Uh, fixed. So it appeared. Uh, so this is uh, geostationary. Um, so. ChatGPT <laughs> might using the word geosynchronous, like I use the word geostationary. Uh, geosynchronous orbits are achieved when the yeah, yeah that's the about the distance or um, from Earth surface, so uh, um, from the center of Earth, like forty thousand kilometers. Yeah, geostationary orbit. I get these two mixed up. Uh, they are not actually synonymous, but uh, I think the mistake of treating them like a synonymous it might be a common mistake. It's certainly the one I make. So um, you gotta kind of parse them out when I use geo when I say geostationary, but I mean geosynchronous. Uh, there are some restrictions. So this would be for geostationary. Uh, it must be over the equator. Yeah. Uh, any other orbit, you can still call it geosynchronous, but it wouldn't be geostationary. Um, global communication. Yeah, three because uh, two uh, is necessary to sort of. Uh, cover each half of the you know, hemisphere of the Earth, but then those two cannot communicate with each other if they are on opposite sides of the Earth. So really they have to be in a triangle arrangement so that they can communicate with each other. Um, yeah. So that they cover entire surface and can uh, communicate with each other. And now uh, these kind of arrangement, it has a really big lag time because this 40 kilometers pretty long distance. So I think you get uh, uh, kind of lag time in communication of uh, tens, hundreds of milliseconds, and that's quite significant. So um, more recent networks like the Starlink satellites, they don't use a geosynchronous orbit. They use um, low Earth orbit and a larger constellation of uh, satellites so that at closer distance, they can cover all the spots on Earth. Um, it's uh, yeah, but okay. Uh, let's see. Diagram below shows. Let me. Oh, uh, I wonder if I do this. It'll copy the diagram. Uh, accessible text. Yeah. Diagram below shows a satellite of uh, a satellite. Let's say much more about our national power questions. Um, yeah. Okay. I hope it recognizes that I haven't asked a question and wait for the question. Yeah, okay, yeah. At which point is the... I don't know if it parsed the diagram description correctly. Yeah, perigee, yeah. Okay, I guess that... Uh, yeah, and that might be... I didn't label the... Perigee and Apogee, so um, I, I guess that's correct. 
um, yeah, <laughs> let's keep going. Which conservation law? Oh, yeah, uh, it's a uh, so the best answer is conservation of angular momentum and uh, conservation of energy can also be used, except it's uh, it's the less good answer. Um, uh, yeah. So, but you know, I guess in terms of the correctness, it's correct, and I say it's uh, less good because um, be because I think in order to use conservation of energy to determine the speeds at this and this point, you have uh, you have to use additional information like Newton's law of universal gravitation, which I guess can be good, but um, also more work. When you use conservation of angular momentum, all you have to use is the fact that gravitational force is a central force. You don't actually need the form of the force. Let me just ask, uh, does conservation of angular momentum play any role? And uh, let's see if it answers right. Yeah, also plays a role, yeah. Yeah, central mass, central force. Uh, it experiences no torque due to gravitational force, not a torque. Uh, this torque, this lack of torque, <laughs> causes singular momentum to be conserved. Uh, yeah, angular momentum, elliptical orbit, cross relative means constant, right? Very solar. Yeah, very, yeah. Yeah. yeah, other than this weird um, thing about the torque, uh, there, there's no torque. That's um, Other than that, the rest seems correct. Okay, uh, describe the relative... Oh. Um... Okay, was this a textbook question? I guess it was. Um... Mm -hmm. What's over the shoulder? All right, um, let's see what it says. Uh, so this is force uh, is acting on the center. The turn, yeah. Perpendicular is right. Now, uh, as the satellite moves faster, that doesn't quite connect because we did this perpendicular. It acts like a centripetal force. So the direction of the satellite is changing, but it's not uh, speeding up. So force vector is still the but the velocity more and more tangentially to the least, resulting in perpendicular. Uh, no, um, that's wrong. Acceleration is uh, um, I mean, center of the ellipse is not a thing. It has two foci, and it's directed towards the the focus where the mass is, central mass is at. Um, um, okay, uh, I I think it's confused about how. So uh, I would say this is wrong, um, or maybe not even wrong, <laughs> maybe because to describing directions that doesn't make sense. So yeah, this is wrong. Uh, all right, so that was this set. Um, and I, I think the main thing I I, don't, I forget what I wrote in the model answer. One of the things you can mention is that at this point you can treat the force from. Uh, the central mass like a centripetal force. And here's a curious thing. The radius of curvature here, where it's closer and the force is greater, and the radius of curvature here, where it's farther and the force is less, they are actually the same from the fact that you can see that they're curved about the same. And the way it works out is, hey, the velocity is different. So here, where it's closer, the velocity is faster enough that when you, you know, work through this relationship of a centripetal force uh, m v squared over r the um, and the I guess solve it for r m v squared over fc this combination of quantities at this point and at this point 
are, are the same. So they have the same radius of curvature. It's a, one of those things that uh, you have to get used to with um, dealing with elliptical orbits. Radius of curvature is not necessarily this distance. That was the case for circular orbits, but for elliptical orbits, how much this is curved is not necessarily connected to the distance from the central body it's orbiting. So I think that might have been one of the things I want you to get at. Um, but whatever the actual model answer says, what ChatGPT says definitely is not correct. <laughs>